This fantasy anime is very epic and fun to watch. All the fight scenes, plot, and even characters left me amazed and satisfied. So I really want to show you how cool it is. Let's move to an adventurer's guild in a city nearby. A man was shocked by what he saw in the forest. A slime eliminated a strange monster with the fire spell. But for his mates, it was hard to believe in his words, more like he was joking with them. He felt annoyed because he was absolutely serious. Then, here appeared a guy in the blue mage mantle. Everyone got silent. His name is Eugene, and he's a really powerful mage. He came back after finishing his task. He had to bring some magic flowers. Well, there was too much. The girl ran away to call the guildmaster. Others were staring astonished. Then, there appeared a juice, the guildmaster. He praised Eugene for such an amazing job. Eugene told the guildmaster about a strange monster he met in the forest, but their dialogue was interrupted by a guy who suddenly rushed into the hall with some horrible news. Thousands of monsters appeared in the forest, and they were going to attack the city. The guildmaster warned everyone about the danger and gave an order to get ready and run away from here. But the adventurers didn't like this idea at all. How could they leave their dear citizens? But Ajus had no idea how they could defend the city with only a few soldiers. It looked like they had no other choice. However, there was a guy who also didn't want to stay aside. It was Eugene. He was ready to help them to protect the city. He had a rare item, the Dragon's Bone, that would allow him to set everything around on fire. It sounded unbelievable. They had never seen such strong magic. So, the adventurers were ready to help him as much as they could. By evening, all the preparations were done. The adventurers were on alert. Then they saw monsters coming here. Of course, they were ready to protect their home no matter what. Meanwhile, Eugene's pet, the white proud wolf, was gathering his master slimes in the forest. Soon, they will come back to the city. Eugene looked at the forest from the balcony. It's gonna happen soon. When monsters came closer to the city walls, soldiers threw some bombs into them. The rain of glass fell over their heads all of a sudden and stopped them for some time, but that wasn't enough to kill these diabolic beasts. The real battle finally began. Eugene started preparing his powerful fire spell. He wanted to find a way to eliminate all the monsters and save the city from fire at the same time. Suddenly, a slime called Eugene, his underling, Driata, found a stranger in a dark mantle and he was throwing strange red crystals here, just like seeds. So, these crystals might be a problem. Eugene decided to destroy it with his magic and send the slimes to tail the stranger. They quickly caught him and tied with magical chains. The crystal also was destroyed by Eugene's magic. Clear job. The young summoner wanted his pets to bring this stranger here, but unfortunately a strange thing happened to him. He broke a glass with poison he was hiding in his mouth, and in the next moment he left this world forever. Meanwhile, the proud wolf in the company of slimes was running fast through the monster's army. The adventurers were holding back all the monsters, but it couldn't last forever. Eugene asked his dear pets to help them. No matter how many monsters they were killing, there were more and more enemies. Eugene wasn't sure if his barrier he put over the city would save it from fire, but then he found a genius solution for the problem. He gave a command to everyone to get back. A Jews addressed his brethren with Eugene's order. Everyone retreated back Back behind the city walls, slimes were ready to protect the entrance. However, there was a huge tough guy the adventurers had to deal with. The enemy was stronger, but does it matter if you have to protect your home? The brave soldiers didn't want to retreat, they were ready to sacrifice their lives here, and thankfully the proud wolf appeared here at the last moment and saved their backs from horrible death. Now when everyone was behind the walls, Eugene was ready to cast the spell. First, he casted the barrier over the city, and then he summoned the dragon fire. All the area around the city was totally burnt away. But by what cost? Eugene went out of his mana limits, and anyway, it wasn't enough to finish them all. So what was he going to do? Yes, the second fire spell. He was going to do it again. No matter how much he had to do for it, he was determined to save everyone. He put the barrier over the city and casted the fire spell again. This time they definitely won't survive it. Eugene did it, and in the next moment he passed out. Later he woke up in the bed. His dear pets and the girl were happy to see him alive. A juice in the company of adventurers had found the stranger's burnt body. There they found a destroyed crystal. His worst thoughts were confirmed. Eugene liked the soup, it was very tasty. The girl asked him why he decided to help them all of a sudden. Well, he couldn't explain it. In his previous life, everyone needed help, so why not? Tonight, Eugene and his pets secretly left the city. 
It was pretty dark outside, so no one would notice him. It's time to travel further and find out who actually was that stranger in the dark mantle. Tomorrow, a juice the Guildmaster had very bad news for people. These monsters were summoned by cultists. It meant that something was about to happen. Dark times were coming. At the same time, Eugene and his party came to another city. The city was large. It seemed that everyone was hungry, so Eugene decided to buy some meat. Slimes and the proud wolf were so happy. Suddenly Eugene heard a loud sound of a huge bell. The meat seller told Eugene all the citizens were gathering for their daily prayer. Interesting. After lunch, Eugene came to the Adventurer's Guild. There he quickly passed the registration. The girl offered him to complete any task. There were some on the desk. Suddenly, a man with dark long hair addressed him. He was going to offer to join his team, Rhodus the swordsman, Tina the archer, and Lisa the spearman. Eugene introduced himself too. They gladly accepted him as a new member except Rhodus. He didn't like his summoner class, but the girls just reminded Rhodus about his previous team. It seemed like his mates just had run away from him. What a joke. Well, it was time to go to the forest. They needed to find the earth dragon's lair. It seemed to be easy for Eugene. The slimes couldn't wait to beat the enemies, and just like by call, a pack of monster wolves suddenly appeared right in front of them. Eugene told his mates about the monsters in two kilometers. They wanted to avoid any fight, so it was very nice info. But Rhodes didn't believe him and wanted to see if there's a reason to trust his words. They ran right towards that place, and obviously they met those monsters. Rhodus drew the blade and began slicing them all into a salad. After he killed all of them, the road was clear, and now Rhodus finally could trust Eugene. At night, they built a camp near the lake. Tina was interested in Eugene's abilities to detect monsters. Of course, he didn't want to show off all his trump cards at once. No matter how they were trying to force him to talk, he was calm and didn't say a word. It was time to sleep. But of course, they couldn't fall asleep at once. They needed one person to watch out, so they decided to change every three hours. There was a prehistory about our young mage. One day, he just found himself alone in an unknown location. He thought he was sleeping. Everything was like a dream, but it was so real. Then he noticed a slime nearby. It seemed to be his little pet. The slime suddenly headed somewhere and Eugene decided to follow him. They came to an old abandoned house in a giant wood. It was a kind of library, but what was it doing in the deep forest? Once Eugene opened an ancient book, he instantly learned some magic skills and increased his stats. Eugene looked on the floor and realized how many slimes were there. He turned them all into his pets, and it seemed they were happy to serve him. They began opening every book, and somehow Eugene's stats were rising up more and more. At some moment, he got the status of Wiseman. Surprisingly, all the slimes were able to talk, and now he could understand them. Eugene woke up from Slime's loud voice. Rodus sneakily left the camp and headed somewhere. It was pretty strange, so the proud wolf and Slime's decided to follow him. The girls also were tailing the swordsman. They were worrying for Eugene, so they didn't want to tell him anything. Suddenly, Rodus noticed someone in the bushes and was about to check it. He threw his dagger right there. However, it stuck in the wood. There was nothing interesting to see, he thought. Thankfully, the Slime was invisible, so Rodus didn't notice him. After that, the girls and the proud wolf with slimes continued chasing Rhodus. There were some bell traps, and Rhodus knew well about its positions. The swordsman entered the wooden house. There was his leader, an old bandit. Rhodus told him about two girls and a guy they could sell for a good cost. Now it became obvious what happened to his previous mates. To the girls' surprise, Rodus knew they were tailing him all this time, and now catching them was just a matter of time. The old bandit was staring at the moon. It was especially dark today. The blue moon means something bad would happen soon, he said. Another bandit didn't believe in this fake legend, and for being arrogant, he was punished harshly. The old bandit was also a cultist. He believed in the danger coming from the blue moon. Tina and Lisa were about to retreat, however. They touched a string with attached bells, and the bandits immediately figured out where they were. It seemed that there was no other choice but to take the fight. However, to the bandits' surprise, instead they saw a strange black monster hiding in the bushes. The old cultist knew it won't end well for them and decided to retreat. The proud wolf was shocked that this stupid plan worked against them. Now it was time to catch the bandits before they ran away. The slimes prepared to cast the spell. Tina and Lisa noticed his slimes and were surprised when the entire bandit's lair turned into a giant ice stone. 
It was more powerful than he expected. Once Tina saw the old cultist's face, she immediately recognized him. Helios, the wanted bandit all the guards were trying to catch. The girls were amazed by Eugene's abilities and praised him for a good job. Well, it's time to come back to the city. Without Rhodus, it would be hard to fight against monsters. And there Eugene offered them his help. He didn't mind doing some more work with them, since they were nice people. It was good, but first they needed to find a better place for the camp. And even there, Eugene did a great job. He quickly found a perfect place nearby. Then, he made the campfire. No words to say, and this mad slime guy was their teammate. The girls didn't know if there was something else that would surprise them more. Then, it was sleep time. But Eugene couldn't stop thinking of the old man's words. The blue moon, the cult, the cult of the blue moon, right? But what were they preparing for? Let's see. The next day, Eugene's team was looking for the earth dragon, and it seemed they were on the right path. They almost came to the wind canyon, a place that had particularly strong winds. Sad, but Eugene's slimes still hadn't found anything interesting. The girls were relying on Eugene's powers a lot. Well, he thought they were overestimating him, as well as the examiner during the adventurer's test. Once Eugene touched the magic ball, it immediately broke. There was a test of their abilities. Eugene tried to do a simple fireball spell, and well, he totally eliminated the giant stone in front of him. He wanted to test out some more of his spells. Stone spell, water stream, air blade, everything was looking useful despite the fact it was actually weak. After some time, the sky suddenly turned violet. It was really strange. Even people in the city were worried. Eugene told his slimes to be careful. The Holy Father told the Commander Riard about the Blue Moon legend. It meant that something bad would happen soon. And he was right. Something shiny fell on the ground and caused an explosion. The sky immediately turned normal back, but now there was a giant dangerous dragon. Eugene gave the proud wolf a command to gather all the slimes and return back. And no, it wasn't the Earth Dragon they were looking for. This creature was way, way stronger and dangerous. It was better to retreat. They chose to go to the canyon. This area was pretty safe. There were a few lizards, but the slimes quickly finished them all. The harsh wind was their only enemy now, or not. The ground under their feet suddenly began to shake. And surprisingly, it was something they were trying to find. The Earth Dragon. And this beast looked really dangerous. Tina and Lisa hid behind the stones, so Yuji and his friends had to deal with the monster by themselves. First, he tried to attack with different spells. However, any attack seemed to be useless. Yuji didn't want to set everything on fire again, but it seemed that he had no other choice. The girls felt worried for his life, and at the moment when the dragon almost struck him, he finally showed off his best magic. Explosive flames filled all the canyon, and when the girls looked at the dragon, well... If these leftovers can still be called a dragon, they had no idea how he defeated such a strong beast. But anyway, they overcompleted their task. After coming back to the guild with such amazing news, the receptionist woman was totally shocked. And as a bonus, they defeated the dangerous bandits group. For all these good things, they received around 14 million gold. The guildmaster already knew about Yuji's strength and decided to talk to him. Yuji and other guild members gathered in the hall to discuss the problem with the blue dragon. The guildmaster asked Yuji to tell them what the beast actually looked like. And instead of thousands of words, Yuji just made a quick painting of it by using magic. The saint quickly recognized the nature of this beast. The same painting was in the Book of Legends. The information says that the blue dragon will destroy all the continent in three days after his appearance. No one wanted to believe in such nonsense, but what would they do then if it would become true? The guildmaster suddenly remembered the possible reason for the blue dragon's appearance. Thirty years ago, there was a ritual that was supposed to summon an entity that would stop the dark powers one day. And it seemed that this blue dragon was summoned here by mistake. Suddenly, the sky turned dark again. Something was happening. Yuji Slimes reported to him that the blue dragon was getting larger and larger. The situation was awful, so without any panic, the guildmaster decided to attack the dragon right tomorrow. No matter what would happen, they had no other choice. During the dinner, Tina and Lisa asked Yuji if he was ready for tomorrow's battle. Of course he was. The girls weren't worrying at all since they knew Yuji is a cool and strong guy. The girls left him alone, but there was someone else. The saint wanted to talk to Yuji. There was a relic dagger he wanted to give him. The church couldn't find any use for it, so the saint felt that Yuji might be the chosen one for this weapon. 
The stats of this blade were pretty cool, so Yuji thanked the saint and went back to the inn. Yuji lying in his room was thinking a lot. He didn't like the idea that people have to sacrifice their lives. This fight might be fatal for most adventurers. Their chances to win were so small and the blue dragon was so large. Suddenly he got a report from the slimes. The dragon was getting bigger and bigger by every second. It was a red flag. Yuji realized there was no more time to wait and decided to destroy the blue dragon tonight. When Yuji arrived in the forest, even by not getting close enough, he could notice how huge the size of the enemy was. The summoner was looking for the best spell to eliminate the target. He threw a fire arrow towards the blue beast. However, his attack didn't cause any effect. His horns began to shine. It meant only one. He was going to attack. The beast launched a bunch of magic beams in different directions. And thankfully, none of them hurt Yuji. Thanks to his barrier magic. Meanwhile, the dragon was getting bigger and bigger by absorbing the magic of the forest. Yuji realized it was time to attack. This dagger would allow him to concentrate magic in one point, so he would be able to pierce the dragon's skin with no problem. First, they had to get closer to the enemy, and it might be a problem since who said he would let them do it easily? Of course not. Another beam began to charge in his jaws, but Yuji wasn't that easy. Another barrier blocked the attack. Now Yuji's team was right below the dragon. By creating platforms and jumping high, he quickly reached the enemy, and in the next moment he got close enough and pierced his eye. The fire magic gathered in the blade and finished the dragon. That's all! Really? Is it the end? No, it wasn't enough. The dragon kicked Yuji away with his strong tail. The beast was mad and thirsty for human's blood. He began to charge another beam attack. Yuji put a few barriers above himself. He needed only one more hit, but how to get closer? Then he suddenly got an idea. Yuji raised his hand, and in the next moment, the powerful lightning struck the giant dragon. For some time, he wasn't able to move, and Yuji was going to use this opportunity to finish the enemy. He jumped high, right at the dragon's head. The next strike will be fatal for the beast. The relic dagger in combination with fire magic easily chopped off the blue dragon's head. His dead body dissolved in a ton of magic essence. The sky turned back to its normal look. Yuji saved humans again, but this time, he was really close to death. The next day, the guildmaster visited Yuji in his room. Of course, he already knew that Yuji killed the blue dragon tonight. What a great job! Humanity was saved, and the guildmaster was thankful for that. While having lunch, Lisa asked Yuji about his next plans. He wanted to visit another city, but had no idea where to go. Lisa offered him to visit Ricardo. He hoped that there won't be anything like blue dark sky or strange giant dragons. Not this time, though. He left the girls and put some of his slimes near them as guard. Later, Yuji got a sudden message from Driada. She looked really excited. It was because of the interesting shrooms that appeared on the place where Yuji killed the blue dragon. She asked him to help her gather it all for making potions. Mana potions and wisdom potions. It was interesting. After gathering the mushrooms, Driada immediately began making the potions. The color of the potions suddenly reminded her about their first meeting. Yuji found Driada, the forest spirit, lying on the ground. He helped her by transferring mana energy. She told him that a strange stone absorbed all her mana and she almost died because of that. Yuji immediately found it and dissolved its negative energy. Suddenly, a bunch of monsters tried to get out of the cursed stone. He immediately applied the barrier over them and burnt them inside. Driada was thankful to him and gave him some magic flowers as a reward. So it meant that the cursed stone contained the dragon's essence, the special type of energy every dragon has. It's not good and not bad, it can be used for creation and for destruction. Finally, all the potions were done. He thanked her for that and continued his way. After some time, they realized that everything was in heavy fog. Suddenly, the proud wolf noticed the smell of humans. They found a little village called Messias, and the fog here was even more dense. All the humans here were looking strange. They were smiling and staring at them for no reason. Such a creepy scene. The village head offered Yuji to take a rest in their quiet place, and Yuji took his offer. But once he saw what kind of food they were eating, he decided to refuse. There was no reason to bother people who live in poverty. Yuji said he was looking for Ricardo City, but lost the road because of the fog. The village head showed him the right way, and Yuji left this place with a somewhat creepy feeling. And after some more time, they finally found what they were looking for. But well, it was looking really abnormal. It was really cold, just like they ended up in Siberia. 
Thankfully, Yuji had a magic barrier to put on himself to stand this winter-like temperature. The guards told Yuji how their city was attacked by extremely cold weather all of a sudden. It seemed our hero got in another trouble. First of all, Yuji visited the pub. However, here the girl told him sad news. They had no wood to cook food. It was too cold nowadays. Yuji was determined to fix that by any cost. He headed to the forest and summoned the axe. It was time to get some wood. Just by one strike, Yuji made all the wood fall to their knees. After that, he needed to dehydrate the logs. Slimes were going to help him with that. Yuji came back to the pub with good news. He brought a ton of dehydrated logs here. The chef was amazed and had no words to say. It looked like a miracle. His eyes lit up with fire, so he was able to burn the fire and cook some tasty dishes for Yuji. Wait, tasty dishes you say? Take all of my wood. The chef finally began cooking. A tasty steak with vegetables appeared on Yuji's table. You rarely can see him that happy. Once he put it on his tongue, he was shocked. He almost died from pleasure. Yuji was so thankful for such tasty food and wanted more tomorrow. So, they needed more wood logs. He had no idea how much wood they needed for the city, but he was going to get it no matter what. The lumberjack's head met Yuji on the east side of the forest. His brigade had problems with efficiency, so having some more hands would be nice. Yuji was interested in why other villages like Village Messias weren't covered in snow. Wait, Messias? The lumberjack head was surprised since it was abandoned. No one was living there. Well, it's better to finish the work now. First, the man didn't expect anything extraordinary from Yuji and was shocked when all the wood fell on the snow with one axe swing. Yuji finished his job so quickly, the lumberjack had no words to say. After some time, Yuji finished transporting the wood logs. It should be enough for three days for the city. Wait, for the entire city? No way, we need more wood. Yuji and his team were working hard all day. Not a big deal to help good people, especially for a good reward. The next day, Yuji got another cool dish from the chef. Once Yuji put it in his mouth, he was sent right to heaven. The food of the gods, no more, no less. Amazing, the chef would be glad to make even better dishes. However, all their fields were attacked by monsters and that was the main problem. Not a big deal for Yuji. His slime team divided by small groups, the monster hunt had officially begun. Their main targets were wild boars. Poor animals had no chances against these crazy hunters. They killed around 50 boars and it was enough. However, they also found a strange sphere. Yuji called Driata in case she knew something, but she saw it for the first time. It looked like it absorbed all the forest's magic just like those cursed stones. Now the reason for such bad weather was obvious. It's time to fix the issue. As always, Yuji easily dissolved all the negative energy, but he was sure there might be more of these cursed spheres. In the end, they found and destroyed 108 cursed spheres. They were placed in a special order, so there might be something in the center of the forest. And his intuition was right. This forest was absolutely wrong. He didn't know why, but it was really hard to stand here. So to stop the curse, he decided to eliminate the forest. Even Driata didn't mind his plan. Explosive fire covered the area around them. And after the cloud of dust dissolved, Yuji noticed an iron hatch in the crater. It seems that this place had even more secrets than he thought. Yugi ended up in an underground catacombs. Slimes went forward to check if they're safe, and soon they found something strange. A giant mechanism that was made to create more cursed crystals. Suddenly, cultists appear here. They immediately realize something went wrong with their plan. Yugi told the slimes to tail them. Soon, these guys almost brought Yugi and his pets to the right place. But unfortunately, they suddenly disappeared. Obviously, they used a secret door, and Yugi quickly realized where it was. They pulled two levers at the same time, and the stone door let them go further. There was another hatch that was leading outside. Soon Yugi found out what was going on when he saw Messias village covered by heavy fog. The slime secretly went through the window, and now Yugi was absolutely sure in his thoughts. Everyone here was a cultist and by their reaction it was easy to say that they were going all in, so it was important to ruin all their plans. Another group of slimes quickly robbed the library. Suddenly, two cultists appeared. The slimes quickly chained them, but as usual, they sacrificed themselves by taking a poison. After that, another group of slimes found a locked door. Yugi quickly solved this little puzzle and the iron door finally opened for guests. The room met slimes with a warm welcome, a ton of gold and jewels, just like in a dream. Soon a cultist noticed that all their treasures were stolen. Impossible. 
The head of the village was mad. How could such a thing happen to them? They were absolutely sure there was a traitor or an enemy they accidentally led into. But they had a trump card, a powerful fire spell, purity. It would activate if all of them met their death. And they already knew what to do. It was a massive sacrifice nobody would expect. These people were really crazy. Right after that, a slight earthquake scared all the slimes. Yugi wanted to take everyone and run away, but first he had to defeat the unleash power of the cult. He put a bunch of barriers over the village, but it wasn't even close to being effective. Yugi quickly got an idea how to stop the fire. He casted his most powerful spell, an unbreakable magic. He went out of his limits, but he couldn't stop now. Through the fatigue and pain, he calmed down the fire beast. Thankfully, there were no casualties. In the late evening, villagers warmly meet their hero, Yugi, and thank God the winter went away and let the spring take its place. Of course, they wanted to celebrate it, so the next day, they offered Yugi to join their party. And how could he refuse such a nice offer? They were drinking all day. The chef also prepared a present for Yugi, his best dish. It was a thing that was making Yugi happy. In the evening, Yugi decided to check the documents from that library. It was the list of people they had to get rid of. The Blue Moon Cult was always somewhere here and Yugi could feel its presence even through the paper. Meanwhile, the Blue Moon Cult wasn't sleeping. They were doing their dirty job as professionals, clear and quick, and try to guess who's gonna be their next target. The next day, the assassins were trying to find him. They still didn't know what kind of man Yugi was, but it doesn't really matter because they were two professional killers. Not a big deal to defeat a weak boy. They quickly noticed Yugi walking alone in the forest. He already knew about the list of deaths, and that's why he left Ricardo City. It was pretty sad for the citizens, but they were glad to show him the way and help with something else. Now Yugi already knew about the assassins who were chasing him. Obviously, he needed to think up something to get rid of them. The assassins could kill him just now, but there already were rumors of people disappearing in the forest. After some time of watching him, they quickly got bored. He looked like a simple guy, no more no less. Yugi got an idea how to make them think he's an ordinary fool. First, he pretended to be homeless with no money. After that, he forced a conflict with a man and fell to his knees to apologize. And all this show was made especially for these two killers. They already were close to realizing their target was totally stupid, as Yugi actually wanted. Soon they will forget about him. Later, Yugi decided to take on a quest about hunting some bulls. And for the assassins, it was very interesting to see him in the fight. Yugi actually was going to pretend to be weak as much as possible. The proud wolf didn't expect his master to put him against the angry bulls. Three versus one. After defeating the first bull, he started believing in himself, but it would be too easy for him. So after that, Yugi applied his support magic over the bulls. And well, it was too much, and it was also enough to convince the assassins of his weaknesses. Now the situation went in an absolutely unexpected way, but the proud wolf refused Yugi's support. He was going to beat them all up by himself. Being in charge, the proud wolf jumped at the bulls and prepared for attack. Now the assassins were sure their target was just a foolish boy with no strong abilities, and it would be nice to end it on a positive note. But Yugi got mistaken a bit. His muscle memory reacted to the bull jumping right at him. Without any thoughts, he pulled the sword out of nowhere and finished the last animal. What a failure. It might be a problem since the assassins started thinking differently. Was he strong or weak? They couldn't be sure. But after thinking logically, they concluded this guy was an ordinary summoner. Yugi breathed out. This mess finally ended. But there was another surprise for Yugi. Their next target was already chosen, and it was someone familiar to Yugi. They reported to their boss that Yugi wasn't a problem. But there was another dangerous person. Someone eliminated Messiah's village, and they must investigate who it was, and what else about their next target. It was the Saint Style, the one who gave Yugi that ancient relic dagger. He couldn't let them do their dirty job and immediately froze them to death. The only thing Yugi couldn't understand about that was why the Saint Style suddenly became their target. The next day, Yugi came to the blacksmith again. The guy recognized him quickly, that homeless person who had no money. He was about to kick him away, but then the blacksmith stopped him, and he was annoyed by his disciples' behavior. Once the blacksmith looked at Yugi, he immediately realized how powerful he was. Sad, but he had no armor that would fit his pets. He could create it by himself, but there was a little problem called the Fire Dragon. The blacksmith showed him a beautiful shining stone. It was the core of the dragon. It can be used to create legendary armor and weapons. 
Sad, but he had only one, so Yugi had to visit the dragon's lair by himself. There also were blue dragons who had even more powerful cores. Yugi thanked the blacksmith for the info and headed towards the guild to take some quests for killing dragons. The administrator wasn't really sure if he was strong enough for such quests. But anyway, Yugi took all of it and headed to the volcano. First, he had to cross the river where a dangerous piranha lives. Yugi was thinking up a plan on how to make it safe for everyone. He addressed his pets and made a fishing net of his slimes. The best way to catch the fish. Slimes quickly noticed a hole underwater. And after researching it, they made the lair's inhabitant angry. The giant dangerous fish scared all the slimes. Yugi quickly pulled the net off the river. This piranha was really large. Yugi immediately reacted with the freeze spell, but it wasn't enough to stop the beast. It's time to be serious. He literally cooked it. Can be called a successful mission complete. But it was only the beginning. Yugi and his friends finally found the dragon lair. There were a lot of dragons, what a nice turn of events. Slimes were afraid of dragons, but Yugi knew their weak spots. He used the water spell and it quickly killed the dragon. They were really vulnerable to water. The slimes' morale immediately rose up. Dragon Slayer Arc. After beating up the red ones, they finally found their main target, the blue dragon. They attacked the beast with the water spells, but it wasn't enough. Then Yugi applied the freeze spell, and it still wasn't enough. So he ordered his little army to cast free spells at once. Looks like it worked. After some time, the dragon just fell down, and there's Yugi's reward. They continued hunting until the evening. It also meant he completed all the quests he had taken. I'd say the administrator lost her mind at that moment, as well as the blacksmith when he saw the blue dragon's core. Now it wasn't a big deal to create armor for his pets. The slimes couldn't wait for it. This armor was especially powerful. No one expected it to be that cool. Now we have not only an overpowered hero, but also his overpowered pets. Worth its cost. Then, Yugi decided to check how it works with spells. And well, I don't even need to say anything, as well as the blacksmith and his pupil. However, the blacksmith warned him that the crystals can crack because of using powerful spells too much. But was it actually the best thing the blacksmith could offer Yugi? Of course, there was another thing to do, to defeat the fire dragon. His lair was right inside the volcano, so it might be a real problem. But Yugi wanted to get his shining core. Suddenly, his thoughts were interrupted by an urgent report from slimes. All the dragons had gone crazy for no reason. Yugi remembered he saw something like that before, and he quickly realized it happened because of the Blue Moon Cult. Yugi told his pets to check if there was someone suspicious nearby the volcano. And he was right, there were two strangers with backpacks. Sudden earthquake happened and Yugi already knew what was going on. As well as his brethren, the fire dragon left his lair and it wasn't good at all. The image was really scareful, but they had to stop those strangers first. They were going to do something with the fire dragon. Yugi was watching them all this time and now he could say it's time to attack. However, these lads had an insane reaction and instincts. The cultists were trying to find their enemy. Then Yugi tried to attack them from behind, but he couldn't expect they were waiting for it this time. The cultist threw a knife to nowhere and somehow he guessed right. But Yugi quickly adapted and in the next moment, finally caught them. The cultists realized there was no chance to escape, so they took the poison as usual and passed out forever. Driada arrived there quickly. She glanced at the barrels and realized it contained the water poisoned with the dark energy. So, those guys were going to turn the fire dragon into a mad killing machine. After getting rid of the curse, Driada went back to her forest. Now Yugi and his mates need to do something with their big problem called the fire dragon. The weather was devilish today, all the citizens were scared and decided to hide underground. And the faster Yugi will defeat this beast, the better it would be. For the first time, the fire dragon came outside, especially in the rainy weather. All the dragons went wild because of the rain. So now Yugi had no other choice but to engage the fight. He already had a nice plan. The proud wolf rushed forward to see if the beast would stop near the river. And to everyone's surprise, he continued going further and further. Yugi was already prepared for the deadly fight. First, he tried to freeze the monster, but it wasn't enough to stop him. He tried to apply the spell again, but it still didn't cause any effect. It meant only one. He needed to freeze him more, now 20 times more than before. Every time the dragon was stepping into the river, he felt insane pain. But nobody expected Yugi to be such a genius. He gathered a ton of water with his barrier, so now this amount of liquid should be enough. 
poor bird choked hard from pain. Then the pride wolf rushed towards the dragon to see if it was enough, and well he was still alive, and more angry than before. Was there any chance to beat him up? Yugi didn't want to give up so he decided to use the most powerful freeze spell he could. It was the fight between the strongest human and the most dangerous wild beast, ice against fire. And in this fight, Yugi defeated the dragon, turning him into a giant ice statue. The beast cracked into pieces and left his dragon core after leaving this world. Everyone was happy they won the fight, and even the weather was praising them with the sunlight. The fire dragon's core was especially big, but there also was a strange mechanism. Nobody had any idea of what it might be, but Yugi already could say there was no good news. In the evening, he met with the blacksmith to give him this epic trophy. The grandpa and his assistant couldn't believe their eyes. It was the most powerful core they had ever seen. It means that soon Yugi will get the strongest equipment. From those cultists, Yugi heard the name of an unknown city, Ordarian City. He asked the administrator and she told him that people there didn't like adventurers and strangers, but he had one more question. He pulled out a strange mechanism he found near the volcano. It was the mechanism that was creating rain by itself, but it was a thing every guild had, so the administrator had no idea why it wasn't marked as a guild's item. Yugi was curious and wanted to solve this puzzle. The next day, the blacksmith gave Yugi the legendary armor as he wanted. Before leaving this place, the blacksmith asked his name, but this guy better pretend to be an ordinary boy. Somewhere underground was a little shrine of the dark powers. A cultist that wanted to gain power of gods prayed for their sake, and they rewarded him for his loyalty. Later, Yugi entered another guild to take some quests, and for some reason adventurers weren't happy at all to see him. When he left the guild's doors, two adventurers decided to talk about him. Soon it was obvious that they were from the Blue Moon Cult. Was Yugi a danger for their organization or not? They couldn't say now. Their plan of summoning the fire dragon was totally ruined by someone, and they were sure it was someone from the list of death, including Yugi. He heard they were talking about someone with the name Walter. Yugi was too focused on his thoughts to notice the Saint Father Stale and his young pupil. They decided to talk in the church. Yugi told him about his thoughts. It was pretty clear now that the Blue Moon cult sneakily entered the guild. Stale came here to talk about a man he was familiar with, and his name was Walter. In the past, Stale was part of the Blue Moon Church. He loved adventures and was a very strong warrior. There were not many people before, but after some time, their guild was attracting more and more adventurers and citizens. Walter was one of them. His faith was way, way above everyone else's that it could be called a fanaticism. And that's what the Saint Stale didn't really like in him. One day he got a message from the god, and the god wanted Stale to deform the church, but the Saint Stale couldn't do such a thing to his brethren. Then, someone attacked them at midnight and Stale was the only person who survived that massacre. The cultists killed all the heads of the church and took control, and the leader of this revolution was Walter. Now it seemed that Walter's cult was controlling this territory, including the guild and the church. The Saint was absolutely sure that the darkness that would turn this world into hell was Walter and his cult. And he was also sure that Yugi was the chosen one to stop those demons. The saint wished him good luck, and Yugi left the church. Then Johan asked his master why he hadn't told Yugi the second part of the god's message, and well, there was a reason. Meanwhile, Walter's people already found out that Yugi had met with the Holy Father. All the preparations were already done. Walter opened the secret room. There was an altar statue, the way Walter was talking to his god. Something bad would happen soon. Yugi was thinking about everything. He remembered that girl from Ricardo City. She told him a legend about the great slime summoner that was pretty similar to Yugi. He wanted to ask Stale personally, but tonight the Holy Father and his descendant left the church. The slimes also noticed there were two people whose way was leading deep to the forest. At the same time, Stale and Johan found the dark barrier in this forest. He easily dissolved it with sacred magic and entered inside. They ended up in a familiar place, if you still remember that scene. Yugi and the slimes finally found their trace and continued following it. The Holy Father and his pupil got a warm welcome from cultists. But this time, Stale was prepared for the fight. Yugi also found the dark barrier and eliminated it with a sacred spell. Stale and Johan entered the main hall. All the cultists met them as well as their leader, Walter. 
The Holy Father came here to fix his mistakes he made in the past, and Walter didn't mind to enjoy the fight together. Despite his age, Shtale was still a really strong warrior. Thanks, he was an adventurer before, but could he expect his descendant to be a traitor? Absolutely not, Johan was part of the cult all this time. Walter told Shtale a story about an unknown hero that was hunting on their cursed crystals, and the hero was way stronger than he expected. Walter didn't even need to explain what was going on, and no matter how much they tried to not cross this guy's road, he was making more and more problems for them. Even the fire dragon fell down against him, and now Walter made a trap for this young hero by catching Shtale. But Shtale knew the future and remembered the past. So, he wasn't afraid of Walter's words at all. The chosen one who was born to stop the evil powers. It could be the end for the Holy Father, but a sudden wall break distracted their attention. Yes, the prince on the white wolf appeared here to save the princess. Yugi addressed Shtale to ask something, but realized there was no time to talk. Johan immediately threw the fireball, but it was too weak. Yugi freed the Holy Father and now they could fight together. Walter was waiting for the hero all this time. The cultists who turned into undead attacked Yugi, but they also were too weak for him. Walter used this opportunity to retreat. While they were fighting against zombies, Walter began his transformation into a monster. Yugi tried to stop him, but it was too late. Thanks to the proud wolf, he saved their backs. Now, Walter became another problem Yugi had to solve. His strength and reaction were way above any expectations. Then Yugi pulled out his strong magic. Firestorm was directed right into the target, but was it enough to kill this beast? Of course not even close. Then Yugi got a plan. He threw the slime towards the proud wolf and now they were in full equipment ready to fight. Their speed was too much even for Walder. Another fireball, but this one was especially strong. But it wasn't enough to kill him. To regenerate his body, Walter used his brethren's flesh. Another fireball, another arm was chopped off and a moment later regained back. And besides, he was getting stronger and stronger. But Yugi just kept attacking with the fire. But his regeneration was stronger than Yugi expected. But then he realized what spell would be the most effective. He casted a spell that dissolves any curse. The wild Walter tried to destroy the barrier, but he didn't figure out this guy's plan. Who could guess that it would be so easy to chain him with magic, just like a butterfly that got stuck in the spider web. The one who was a hunter ended up being a prey. Yugi just cooked him like a chef. It was his last minutes of life. Walter addressed his god and to his descendants with faith in the grand revelation. At the next moment, the Holy Father realized what was going to happen now and warned Yugi, but it was too late. This diabolic place was devouring everything around. It suddenly stopped as quick as it had started. A little shining piece of puzzle fell on the ground and finished the picture. The wise man was born in this world after Walter's death. The message that Shtale got was about the grand demon's rebirth, and now the entire world was in danger of elimination. The wise man was using the same magic as Yugi, and it was not less powerful the final fight that would finish the story and determine this world's existence. So Yugi and his mates had no other choice but to save everyone from him. But was it even possible to at least scratch such a monster? Yugi surrounded him with his slimes and attacked with thousands of fireballs. The enemy's magic was especially strong, but how was he able to use such powerful spells so many times? Yugi got an idea and ordered his pets to gather around the demon. Free's spell attack didn't even touch him, then Yugi tried to cook him again, but the wise man easily blocked his attack. At that moment, they both realized there was no more reason to hold back. They pulled their most powerful fire spell they ever had. Two unleashed powers engaged in a deadly fight, and in the end, one of them became a winner. The Slimes and Yugi finally could celebrate their victory, or not. The villain still was standing without a single scratch, and now he was ready to purify this world. It looked really unhealthy. All the monsters went crazy since the dragon essence spread it all over the world. The soldiers quickly realized it was time to retreat back to the city. This cursed rain caused monsters to go wild. It was a real madness. The wise men wanted to break the infinite process of life and don't let this world be reborn. But this summoner was the last barrier he had to overcome. Yugi realized it wasn't possible to defend against him, so he decided to attack instead. The Holy Father couldn't believe his own eyes. Slime suddenly told their master about monsters trying to attack the city. Yugi quickly realized he couldn't fight on two sides, but did he actually need it when the best soldiers were ready to beat them all up? The situation was way better than Yugi thought. 
all the adventurers were ready to protect their homeland again. Even the blacksmith was helping them by giving them his best equipment. At that moment, Yugi realized how alone he was before. But in this world, it was way different. Now Yugi could concentrate on fighting against the wise man. He immediately helped his mates with some support spells, but the main problem was still standing in front of him. Yugi had a trump card, the mana potions. Thank you, Driata. Yugi quickly gained enough altitude to be at the same level as his enemy. The wise men couldn't understand why Yugi was trying so hard to protect this world. This question was easy to answer for Yugi now. Should he even have any reason to protect them all? Of course no, as well as the reason for them both to fight for this world. They were shooting their most powerful spells again and again. At some point Yugi realized he wouldn't be able to win this fight like that. And then he found the solution, Heaven's Punishment. The giant lightning bolt struck the wise man hard, making him fall to the ground. Heaven's punishment again, 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 and again. Nobody would survive these attacks. The wise man was close to falling down, and Yugi didn't want to lose his only chance. And when the sun will cross with the moon, this world's fate will be decided. Yugi locked himself with the wise man in a portable dimension. There they didn't need to hold back anymore. The sacred dagger charged with holy magic stabbed the villain. His body cracked in parts as Walter's plan on eliminating this world. The barrier magic dissolved and Yugi appeared to everyone's surprise, but he drained himself too much. Feeling of relief filled his body. It was the end. The Holy Father Shtale prayed for the hero's sake in the church, and he knew they would meet someday again. The proud wolf and the slimes wanted to eat something. Today, everyone was celebrating. The chef made everyone happy with some tasty food and drinks. At the same time, Two cultists discussed the incident that happened to Walter. No matter what would happen, they were absolutely sure in their faith. And it was time to start the great purification. Yugi at the same time was chilling near the campfire and well, again he got in trouble. The next day Yugi came to the guild to finish the quest with the giant tigers. The receptionist girl was worrying for Yugi since he was still traveling alone. Suddenly there appeared a woman that was trying to complete the same quest, and once she saw him, she realized he looked familiar to that great summoner. And well, imagine their reaction when they figured out that this summoner was standing right in front of them. What a turn of events. And at this positive note, our story gets to its logical end. Thank you for watching, see you later in another cool recaps.